I'm seeing double. Four vivas. I'm joking. I want to start off with this inception um, just as a joke. Enjoy this while everyone trickles in. This is an added topic because news is breaking. Put forward, steal the election in an unlawful fashion. I say change that for a second to legitimate concern about the validity of the election. If that was the way you focused on it, which is a way to do it as applied, even with the facts. Would what President Trump said on those counts be a protected speech? And the answer is it has to be, because the only thing that makes it fraudulent is the state saying it's false. Take every one of those and say, okay, it's not false. It's protected. The only reason it becomes unprotected, in the state's opinion, is because they call it false. And that's what Alvarez doesn't allow. In and of itself, it cannot be simply the content based. It has to be contextual. And the contextual here is a political core value I'm being addressed, elections and campaigning. That my prediction and is that in this clip. True for the uh, let's just skip a little bit here. Here what I have to say. All it refers to the state. Ah, uh, look, I'm I'm replaying the hearing from when was this? Last week. This was the hearing in front of Scott McAfee, where defendant Sato, or I say not defendant Sato, defendant Trump's attorney Sato, who's brilliant and fantastic, as are all of those uh, defendant's attorneys, Ashley Merchant, and I have to stop there because I don't know the names of the other attorneys. They're all good. We watched that live together. I believe it was last week. What, what was the date? Give or take. This is my, my entire life has been rolled up into one very long day. It was seven days ago. It was last week. Maybe it was eight days ago. And that was the hearing before Judge Scott McAfee as to whether or not the indictment to the charges against the defendants led by uh, Mat Mata, Stato would be dismissed on the basis that the prosecution as applied was violative of the First Amendment, that all of the impugned speech that served as the basis for the indictment in the Georgia Rico case was protected speech, and the law, as it's being applied right now, was to sanction and effectively criminalize, well, let's, you know, criminalize protected speech. I said at the time uh, that I, this is going nowhere because you saw from the questions that Scott McAfee was asking, intent behind the words seems to matter. Is this not a substantive argument? Are these not substantive defenses? When Trump came in and said, tweeted out, stolen, we need to get the right electors, yada, yada. Was the intent behind that criminal uh, or you know RICO-ish racketeering, whatever the hell you want to call it, or was the intent bona fide free exercise of political speech? And I said, it's too complicated. The longer it gets, the more complicated the arguments get the less likely it is the judge is going to grant it at this preliminary stage. And lo and behold, don't chalk this one up to, per, to corruption. Chalk it up to predictability. You, you knew that it was going to happen because if the judge didn't grant the other dismissal of Fannie Willis, Fannie Willis, you knew he wasn't going to grant this because it's far more nuanced. And the harder they argued, the more complicated they showed it to be, the more they, deter the more they basically demonstrated it needs to go to the merits of source we don't know what the intent was was it criminal fraudulent intent we don't know i haven't read the judgment yet this literally just came out 18 minutes ago but i predicted it and i'm going to give myself a pat on the back when i'm right and i can still be vindicated by the georgia court of appeal in terms of the disqualification of the fanny judge rejects efforts to dismiss trump georgia case on first amendment grounds there you have your judge scott McAdoo. what's, what's he saying here not issue a ruling on this issue today though Trina Kaufman joins us. Oh, okay, let's see this. Um, a Georgia judge on Thursday denied an effort. This is McAfee. Denied the effort of Trump and the 14 others to dismiss the 2020, get that out of here, election-related case uh, out of Fulton, ruling that the First Amendment does not protect the defendants from prosecution. I'm going to steal your stuff is a is First Amendment, but it's not protected speech. The 14-page order judge Scott McAfee rejected the argument put forth by the defendants that the charges violate the First Amendment protections of political speech and the right to petition Congress. Free speech, including political speech, is not without restriction, McAfee wrote. These excluded categories include speech integral to criminal conduct. It was clear that's what the state is arguing, and you can't get rid of that now without evidence. Fraud or speech presenting an imminent threat to the government's that the government can prevent. 
Trump and 18 others, yada, yada, yada. So the former president faces 10 felony charges because Scott McAfee dismissed uh, three of the other indictment charges related to the phone call, but didn't dismiss the underlying acts. Defense attorneys challenged the state law underpinning the charges, saying the alleged violations were protected political speech. You remember during the hearing, they were saying, are you, are you challenging it um, on its face? I forget what the, um, uh, is it a facial challenge or is it an as applied challenge? And they all had to concede it wasn't a facial challenge because apparently this law has been tested before and they say the law is not unconstitutional on its face. They were arguing as applied to this case, it was unconstitutional, First Amendment, yada, yada. And judge says, no mas, uh, since the speech in question is alleged to have been made in furtherance of criminal activity. Even core political speech addressing matters of public concern is not impenetrable from prosecution if allegedly used to further criminal activity, the judge wrote. I'll get to the whole decision afterwards. Maybe I'll do a little uh, Viva Fishing vlog. Oh, by the way, uh, if he's watching, I doubt he is, but he might get this later. Uh, CanCon has been inviting me to fish with him in Florida, saying I, he's going to show me how to Texas rig a worm so that I don't snag all of that weed on the bottom of the densely, uh, what's the, uh, not flora, fauna, the densely faunated, populated, warm waters of here. Can't come. I've seen, I've seen the messages. I'll get to you. I've never said no to a good day of fishing. Uh, so that's it. Scott McAfee, predictable ruling. We'll see where it goes from here. I'm still waiting for the Georgia Court of Appeal to vindicate my initial prediction that Fannie Willis would get disqualified because I was wrong. As it turned out then, if it turns out to be right, I still claim the W. Like I did in Nicholas Sandman. When we said, is the judge going to dismiss the the the, uh, the 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 defamation case? And I said, hell no. But this was back before I realized how many dismissals are actually granted under U.S. law. And then the judge dismissed it. Then the judge reviewed his own decision and reinstated the claim. Nate, the great lawyer, this is how we met, actually, called me out. And then um, I ended up being right in the long run. So if the, if the Georgia Court of Appeals disqualifies the Fannie, I claim a W. On this one, I'm going to claim a W, but it was a very, very easy one to predict. Okay. Ooh. Good afternoon, everybody. What time is it? 1.37? Uh, yeah, we're getting a show today. Oh, tomorrow. Tommy Robinson. I think we're either starting at 12 or 12.30, but it's tomorrow. 12 or 12.30, Tommy Robinson. He's written a new book, which is undoubtedly going to get him into trouble if it hasn't already. And we're going to delve into Tommy. His, I said... He says, how much time do you need? I said, if you can give 90 minutes, because I like to start the origin story, childhood, upbringing, and how you got to be public enemy number one, at least according to some. So that's going to be tomorrow. Uh, so stay tuned for that. For today, we are talking Jenna Griswold. Holy. <sighs> they are engaging in lawfare election interference. I did a, um, I did a podcast this morning. And I don't want to screw up the name of the podcast. Sean Newman podcast. Canadian guy. Good guy. Sean A-U-N, not A-W-N. Newman with one N, not two Ns. And I was just, we were talking about it, like the, the fall of Canada, how it happened so slowly, then all at once, legislation, legislation after legislation. In the States, the weaponization of all aspects of the judiciary, the prosecution, the government, the media, to fornicate an election. They changed the laws back in 2020. They wrote an article about it. And I'm explaining to Sean, like, they're literally doing the same thing now. They changed the laws to let E. Jean Carroll sue Donald Trump beyond the statute of limitations. That window opened and closed. Now nobody can do it. But they got what they needed out of that one exception under the law. A, a revision, a change in the law that E. Jean Carroll spearheaded, according to her own lawyer. They changed the law there. And now they are weaponizing all aspects of the system to interfere with the election. And we're going to get to Jenna Griswold's latest attempt. When she uh, was spanked down hard by the Supreme Court 9-0 that you can't willy-nilly remove the leading presidential candidate from the ballot because of your presumed self-executing insurrection clause. Take it and stuff it, Jenna. Well, now she's going to go literally try to change the law, seemingly to violate the Constitution. Jack Smith doesn't seem to understand the law. Uh, from what I understand, not, not, so, not such a successful prosecutor exercising more bad uh, discretion, bad judgment uh, in his latest filing to Judge Eileen Cannon. I've been like, everybody's been saying, oh, judge, ju not judge. Jack Smith threatens Eileen Cannon. I'm like, what the heck do you mean threatens? Like, threatening to go to appeal is not a threat. Anyhow, we'll break it down very simply because 
it's complicated. And my goal is to simplify it without further complicating it. What else? I had a couple of other losers, liars, and hypocrites in the header thumbnail. Jimmy Kimmel and uh, that other guy there, John Stewart. We'll get to it. It's, it's, it's good, fun stuff. For those of you who don't know who I am, how did you get here? And what are you doing here? Viva Fry, David Fry, former Montreal litigator turned current Florida Rumbler. Do basically daily streams, shorter videos called the vlogs, either out of my car, fishing, or in my home office, which is accumulating uh, license plates. Uh, we start on YouTube, Rumble, and vivabarnslaw.locals.com, where we have a wonderful community. I'd say if everybody, if you want to support the work that I do, that Robert Barnes and I do, vivabarnslaw.locals.com is the best place. It's 10 bucks a month, 100 bucks for a whole year if you get it. There's tons of exclusive stuff for supporters, and there's tons of stuff open to the general public. We've got an amazing open community there, above average. Fantastic. Come join or don't join. Support or don't support. That's one way to do it. The other way, uh, tips, chats, and whatever. But snip, ship, clear away. Snip, ship, snip, clip, share away is the easiest free way to do it. Hit that thumbs up, that like button. Free, easy. And you support the content creators who bring you the news in an entertaining fashion that you all so yearn for. The other way that's beyond your control is I got sponsors, people. We got sponsors. And thank goodness for the sponsors who are not afraid to sponsor the hinged, fringed minority holding unacceptable views. Although I tell you, we're at, the, we're at a, an inflection point where we're going we're gonna to bring back certain terminology. We are going to shift the Overton window back in their faces. But the sponsor for today, it's another one that I love and it's another one that I use myself. Who doesn't love coffee? It's a trick question. Well, I, mean, I know people don't like coffee, but some people don't like coffee. But coffee is good, and good coffee is better. On a scale of 1 to 10, how much do you hate shitty coffee? They let me swear. I, for one, I loathe shitty coffee. I do not like drinking coffee that doesn't taste like coffee. If I wanted tea, I would go to England, and I would have some Earl Grey. There's a time and a place. But when I drink coffee, I want it to taste like coffee. This is why I'm introducing you guys to 1775 Company Coffee Company. It's great. It's... I'd say it'll put hair on your chest, but uh, I don't have hair on my chest. But it's good, and it'll wake you up in the morning. In 1775, that's a year before, 1776, the world awakened to a new era. And now 1775 Coffee Company is bringing you a coffee that embodies that revolutionary spirit, crafted with passion and precision. Our beans are ethically and exclusively sourced from the finest coffee farms in Bolivia. 1775 Company, they have a farm-to-cup journey ensures the highest quality authenticity and sustainability from start to finish with each sip your palate will recognize and appreciate the dedication and passion that goes into crafting a single brew someone had asked me is it strong it's strong if you don't want coffee that tastes like coffee go to tim hortons if you want crappy burnt coffee go to starbucks if you want rich bold delicious coffee 1775.com forward slash viva you'll get 10 percent off check out at your first order it's delicious. I love it. Wake up to the taste of freedom, people. 1775.com forward slash Viva. 10% off your first order. So make it a big one. It's delicious. The link is in the pinned comment. Viva Fry, I'm here. What did you miss? Oh, you missed the sponsorship. That's 1770. I'm joking. I'm not doing it again. Welcome. You can watch from the beginning at 1.5, though I'm told that gives people migraines and sometimes seizures. So don't do that. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, we got our first uh, super chat here. William Tardy. And if you come in twice, you are retardy. Uh, considering there was almost about 150,000 unverified ballots in Fulton, that should have been enough to raise suspicion. People were saying, you know, oh, I can take out the sponsor. People were saying that, who was it? It was the defense attorney for Harrison, uh, Harrison Floyd. He's like, yeah, you know what our defense is going to be? That the accusations that it was improper, fortified, fraudulent, that they're accurate and true. Let us go to trial. Um, but look, it's it's we we know what happened. We know that Georgia postponed having the hearing on signature matches, never did a proper signature match, and therefore didn't do one. We know what Time magazine quoted as having done. Hold on, I'm gonna get it. Time magazine, it's worth repeating, and all you have to do is put in the word time magazine and cabal. And once upon a time. Accusing people of operating in secret cabals was deemed to be anti-Semitic, racist, whatever, whatever it was. Now it's when they when they do it, cabal people, right there. That's why the participants want the secret history of the 2020 election told, even though it sounds like a paranoid fever dream. 
a well-funded cabal <laughs> of powerful people ranging across industries and ideologies, working together behind the scenes, fornification, to influence perception, hmm, propaganda, change the rules and laws, hmm, lawfare, steer media coverage, more propaganda, and control the flow of information. Oh, censorship. They were not rigging the election. What the fuck do you think they were doing if they weren't? Sorry, I'm sorry. It's too early to be swearing. I'm sorry. What the fudge were you doing if it wasn't rigging the election? What everything you just described, they weren't rigging the elections. The party told you not to trust the evidence presented before your eyes. It was their last request of you. George Orwell, 1984, paraphrased. They weren't rigging the election, you dumbass. They were fortifying it. And they believe the public needs to understand the system's fragility in order to ensure that democracy in America ensures. Oh, they weren't. When they changed the laws and censored and steered information, and they weren't rigging the election, dummy. Don't be stupid. Don't be doffed. Oh. What the hell? Why did his wife marry him? Oh, I thought you were talking about my wife. Well, hold on. Why would Wade divorce his wife? Have you seen her? She makes Fanny look like a kid. I thought you were talking about my wife. And yeah, so that's the, um, they changed the laws, literally. Like, people need to understand the only reason that E. Jean Carroll was allowed to sue based on her delusional, fevered frenzy, psychopathic hallucination, two and a half decade old hallucination was that she was integrally involved in passing a law called the uh, Adult Survivors of Sexual uh, Abuse or something that opened a one-year window for adults who were victims of sexual assault, allegedly, to sue. And she sued right within that window. That window all but closed up. It closed up now. Now nobody can do it, but they got what they needed. What was it? $81 million, $65 million punitive, $11 million to the defamation reparation program, and $7 million defamation. What was it? $3 million defamation? Okay, Canada is doomed, uh, so we'll get there in a second. But for now, changing the laws. So Jenna Griswold, who's been crying on social media, not literally crying, but my goodness, it looks like that, has been crying on social media about being the victim of threats and abuse and harassment. According to her, she's received over 800 death threats. And one by the looks of it, it seems that there have been two charges and that predated the events at issue. So of the 800 allegedly bona fide death threats that she's got, nobody's been prosecuted? Hmm. Maybe um, being told to F off on the internet or you treasonous hag if that's what she's getting. And don't say that anyhow, it's not good. Uh, maybe she deems that to be a, a death threat when in actual reality, it's not. It's just people talking shit on the internet because that's what people do on the internet. You shouldn't do it, nor should you come out crying after having tried to violate democracy, that you're getting threats if they're not actually bona fide, sanctionable threats. If, they, if, they, if she was getting legit, you know, uh, prosecutable uh, death threats, well, something tells me the same weaponized FBI that went after all the January Sixers, the old thousand plus of them, 900 human years in prison, something tells me they'd find an excuse to go after these people as well. All right, what's she up to though? Uh, have I pulled up the wrong tweet? I don't want to get ahead of myself. Jenna Griswold put out a tweet. It said, uh, I'm protecting democracy is my number one number one goal in life. So I've got to I've got to you know, change the laws to do it. Here it is. My legislative priority, making it a crime to be a fake elector. Fake. Not alternate. Fake. Why don't you say? My legislative priority to make it being an illegal elector is to make it illegal to be an illegal elector. Here, here's a, here's a head scratcher. If it's not illegal to submit alternate electors, you're not going to make it illegal by calling them fake electors or illegal electors if what they are, in fact, are lawfully protected, constitutionally protected, arguably, uh, alternate electors. And we'll get there. But, uh, okay, but don't worry. Jenna Griswold, protecting democracy, one ballot exclusion at a time. Write that down. That one was good, actually. Uh, she comes out and says, my legislative priority, making it a crime to be a fake elector, just passed the Colorado Senate yesterday. Yeah, because we've all seen how those Soros-funded jack and ninnies are uh, very, very eager to protect democracy by excluding candidates from the ballot. It needs to be a crime to try to steal a presidential election. Next stop, the governor's desk. Y you know who's trying to steal a presidential election right now? 
Jenna Griswold. By the way, check this out. This is hilarious. Look at her picture here. It's the pink one, right? Okay. Am I going to be able to search on Twitter? Remember, that's that's Jenna Griswold. That's her personal account. I don't know why she's tweeting official stuff from her personal account. Let me go to a sec of it's sec of state Colorado. Sec of state. Uh, come on, I don't wanna, this is I don't want to waste too much time doing this, but I think I need to show it. Griswold secretary. Oh, she's not. She's not. She's um ah uh, Jenna Griswold. Secretary of State. She is the Secretary of State. Secretary of State. Remember, remember, just have the picture of the pink one in your mind right now. Okay, okay. Why can't I find her official, her official Twitter account? Uh, she's really, she's really a sec, uh, uh, Colorado Secretary of State. Come on. Come on, Viva. Here we go. Colorado Secretary of State. And uh, what do we notice? What do we notice, people? It's the same bloody picture, but on her Secretary of State, Colorado, she uses the blue blazer. And on her personal one, she uses the same picture with the pink blazer. Very bizarre. And uh, do not stare into the eyes for too long or say Jenna Griswold three times at three in the morning or else she will appear behind you. So she's uh, trying to make it a law here. What's she been up to in terms of that? Here. I went to find it. This is what Jenna Griswold, Griswold has been up to. News release. This is from January. Uh, let's see what they were saying here. It's very, very funny. Attempting to steal the presidential election should be clearly illegal. Anyway. Hey, here's an idea. Maybe he didn't try to steal it, and therefore it's not illegal. M maybe that. But let's argue from conclusions and not towards them. What he did, we need to be illegal. So let's work from that starting point. The conclusion, said Secretary Griswold. Griswold. This bill will make fake elector schemes a crime and ensure the will of Colorado voters by removing a candidate from the ballot. There are not enough middle fingers on anybody's hand here. Fake electors were central to the attempt to steal the presidency in 2020. HB 24 1150, the false slate of electors, would criminalize acting as a fake elector, engaging in a fake elector scheme, or conspiring to engage in a fake elector scheme to ensure this type of attempt to suppress the vote and take away Coloradans' voice in elections. It also bars something, yada, yada. Okay, that's, that's, the, that's the goal. And then the draft provision. Strikeout means that they're removing it, and italic means it's an addition that of note. Each crime is a punish, each crime is punishable by a fine of no more than $10,000. They wanted jail time for this, by the way. In addition, a defendant who is convicted of the crime of perjury or subornation of perjury for knowingly and falsely swearing or attesting to the oath required by law for presidential electors or inducing another to knowingly and falsely swear or attest to the oath required by law for presidential electors, electors is disqualified as required by the state constitution from being a member of the General Assembly and from holding any office of trust or profit in the state. Well, at least, at least they limited it to the state this time. This is how they want to control democracy, by the way. Fabricate crimes out of whole cloth that actually defy the relatively clear terms of the Constitution. Fabricate a crime out of whole cloth so you can go after your political opponents and bar them from ever holding office again. Of course, you know, they want to do it going forward. They don't want to do it in the past. When Democrats did this, <laughs> the alternate slate of electors, many of you know this. If you don't know it, you're new to the channel and welcome. Many of you know this and some of you won't. It's a legal theory that has been around for some time and actually has a precedent under the Nixon-Kennedy uh, election of 1960. Listen to this, people. It's from Wikipedia. And so when it's from Wikipedia and it runs contrary to the uh, preferred narrative, you know that it's a little bit more truer than they're saying here. But even if what they're saying here is true, Jenna Griswold wants to make lawful activity unlawful. She wants to um, criminalize constitutional conduct. In 1960, Hawaii experienced a close. Yeah. Oh man, that dog's annoying. Oh, sorry. Get my hair back here. In 1960, Hawaii experienced a close presidential race between Nixon and Kennedy, and its elector's outcome was unclear by December. 1960, when electors were required to cast their votes, although the nation had already been called um, for Kennedy, regardless of Hawaii's results. Both Democratic and Republican elector slates were created. Oh, 
Well, one of them has to be fake. How'd they do that? Oh, they, they both parties submitted uh, uh, electors? Hmm. W one of them has to be fake, right? No. With the governor certifying the Republican electors as Nixon was currently in the lead pending a recount, Democratic electors would also sign and deliver their own elector certificates. Hmm. You're criminals now. If, if Jenna Griswold has her Democrat democracy preserving ways, you're criminals. And assert a Kennedy victory using virtually the same language that the false Trump electors would later employ in 2020. It's amazing, eh? The, the Democrats would also submit and deliver their own electors, but when it's Trump's, they're false Trump electors. There is, there is no discourse with dishonesty. There is only exposing it and, and clarifying it for those who are still reasonably intelligent, reasonably honest, and haven't sold their souls. There, there's, there's no way. If you, if you don't understand what's fundamentally deceitful and patently dishonest about this, you, you never will. And if you do, yeah, they, they, the Democrats deliver their own. But Trump's false electors, they would employ this very same tactic using virtually the same language. You know what that's called? Dummies? Precedent. With no caveats mentioned for ongoing recount. After the recount, Hawaii flipped to Kennedy and the governor certified a new state of Democratic electors to send to Washington, D.C. On January 6, 1961, then Vice President Nixon received all three slates of electors certificates and only certified the second post-recount Democratic slate. Nixon stated that the event should not be used to establish it. Oh, that's nice. Nixon stated it. Oh, great. But Nixon's the Supreme Court. A court case that in a court case that in incident, what the, hold on. A court case that incident resulted in a ruling that the ultimately the ultimately certified Democrat electors were legitimate. That's weird. I thought they were criminals, according to Jenna's new proposed piece of legislation. A ruling or decision regarding the original uncertified slate electors was never made in Congress or court. So they want to criminalize what is basically constitutionally protected because right now at this particular point in time, they think it's going to favor them politically, ideologically, and strategically, literally changing the laws yet again or attempting to. And then Jenna Griswold, a little psycho crybaby that she is, comes out on Twitter or gives interviews as to how she's being harassed and intimidated and threatened. Don't do it, people, because it allows the, 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 the victimizers to pretend to be the victim. But something tells me that what she considers a death threat is what anybody who lives on the Internet has seen time and time again. L don't leave your DMs open if you don't want to see weird messages from people. And by the way, you want to act like what people are going to wrongly qualify as treasonous because it's not treason under the law. But if you act treasonous, expect people to accuse you of treason. That's not a death threat either. You want, you want to go out and circumvent uh, I'm not even going to say circumvent, undermine democracy, expect some blowback from the people whose vote you are disenfranchising. But people, no violence and no actual criminal threat because all that it does, A, it exposes you because they will come after you hard. They'll come after you hard regardless, so don't give them an excuse. And it allows the victimizers to claim to be the victim. So, <laughs> Psycho Crybaby, great talking head song. Well, uh, maybe I'm going to play that when we head over to... You play, you play music on YouTube, the entire stream gets, gets copy claims. So that's what's going on with Jenna Griswold, Preserving Democracy, a la Time Magazine, um, 2000 election. Let me see, because I know that I've done it. Okay, we're live on Rumble. Okay, good. Okay, just checking there and let me see what's going on in vivabarnslaw.locals.com. Boopsy says, thanks. So thank you so much, David. I hope you just mean from trying to make sense and make light of reality because sometimes it's difficult to understand and sometimes it's very unpleasant to realize. And so it needs a bit of sanity and a bit of humor. If you can't laugh, what can you do? The only way they could the only way they could be fake electors if the names were made up and the people don't exist, says Boopsy. Exactly. The only way they would be fake electors is if Jack Smith comes in and says, I'm Jenna Griswold, and oh yeah, this is actually for Trump and not the elector for Biden. That's the only way it could be a fake elector. None of these people committed perjury. None of these people committed forgery unless they signed someone else's name. And none of these people were fake. They were clear, transparent in their own name alternate slate of electors the exact same way it went down in Hawaii. And that's it. Boopsy says, exactly, David, it helps me immensely. Good. Well, we're going to have one palate cleansing laugh before we head over to Rumble and Locals. 
because Jack Smith is an entirely, well, Jack Smith, it's not totally related. So we're going to have a palate cleansing laugh. And it highlights the hypocrisy, the double standards, what I call the lawlessness. Uh, do we? Need, oh, we're going to start with Jimmy Kimmel. And, and I dare, I defy anybody to try to copy claim this. This oh, I'm doing it. Okay, L this is what Jimmy Kimmel had to say uh, the other night. I don't watch this scumbag because he's a scumbag and I don't like him. I, I, I don't, you know, sometimes you judge people, you meet them in real life. You might feel a little bad for giving them a hard time, a little razzing on the internet. Jimmy Kimmel's a certifiably bad man. Any anybody who says, "Hey, there, Wheezy, you didn't take the little Jimmy jab," go. You you don't get health care. This is this is the George Soros is of of nineteen thirties. This is or late night late thirties early forties. But here, this is what you have to say. Traveling to Japan, I realize that this place, this USA, we're always chanting about, is a filthy and disgusting country. <laughs> Pause it right there. This is a filthy and disgusting country. Now, he he might be right. If he's talking about New York, Baltimore, Philadelphia, big cities, California. When I went to California and I went to fill up my gas, you know, fill up the gas before bringing the car back to the airport. Dude, countryside's beautiful. Big cities are filthy cesspools. Uh, when Trump said that about D.C. and Baltimore, he was called racist. When Trump referred to other countries as allegedly, because I don't actually believe he even said it, but allegedly referred to other countries as shithole countries, it was racism. Now, all of a sudden, you got Jimmy Kimmel, Double Standard McGee, Mr. Blackface himself, Carl Malone, Mr. Wheezy, you can go die because you didn't get a, an experimental jibby jab. Now he's saying it's a filthy, it's a hell, a filthy hellhole of America. <laughs> we were Hilarious. in Japan for seven days. Not only did I not encounter a single dirty bathroom, <laughs> the bathrooms in Tokyo and Kyoto are cleaner than our operating rooms here. <laughs> Oh, you should totally go to socialized medicine. That'll make your operating rooms much cleaner. I'm not playing the rest of this clip because I don't like him. So this is the big joke. Oh, my goodness. America's filthy. Yeah, yeah. Do, do, do I? I was told. I was told by one individual that. Hold on. Hold on. I, 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 I remember something. Right? Remember this guy. Didn't he, didn't he say something about the, you know, filth is the price of freedom? Because the difference between our urinal caked chaotic subways and your candelabra beautiful subways is the literal price of freedom. Literal. Because the Liter but what was he talking about? Because it's very important. Because back then, Tucker Carlson was comparing the squalor of American subway systems to the cleanliness of the Russian subway system. And that you can't compare. Uh, you can't compare. Uh, a free country to the tyranny of Russia. And so there, the comparison was between a free and dirty America or a clean civil law and order tyranny of Russia. This is this is the fuller clip. Subway station that normal people used to get to work at home every the museum. day that's nicer than anything in our country. There's no graffiti. It's a flipping no museum. Film, no foul smells. Pro probably no stabbings. <laughs> <laughs> that's a f nice subway. That's a very... <laughs> Although, to be fair to the New York City system, uh, it was yeah. constructed in 1904. Yeah, subway out of cakes. Urinal well, cakes. Yeah, that's, that's hilarious. I don't even get the joke. Great engineer Giuseppe Pisa everywhere. I have Between no idea what, that, what joke urinal even means. Caked chaotic subways and your candelabra beautiful subways is the literal price mm. of freedom. Now, uh, what do you have to say about that and Japan, John Daly? John Stewart, not John Daly. <laughs> The John D Stewart on the Daily Show, not John Daly on the Stewart Show. It is just it's, it is is Japan not a free country? Oh, so you are saying cleanliness is not directly inversely correlated to freedom? As you were making that stupid argument in Russia, Japan is a pretty free country. You know what? It's not uh, of a country. Um, it's got closed borders. I mean, it's easy because it's a island. Uh, it's not particularly homogeneous. I don't say that that's the reason here, but I'm just saying, like, you know, for all the things that uh, these virtue signaling buffoons like to pretend makes America somehow singularly, uh, uniquely open, uh, wonderful, which I, which I tend to agree with. I mean, I do, it's, it's a beautiful melting pot of a country. Uh, but when you're trying to distinguish the filth of big city nonsense in this country and you have to compare it to Russia, oh, there, it's an easy one. But let's, no, Japan is clean. Japan is law and order among the safest countries on earth. It definitely has other problems. It definitely is not as homogeneous or as open a society 
as America is. But like Thomas Sowell said, there's no right answers. There's only trade-offs. But what is clear is that the trade-off for filth does not need to be freedom. And uh, by the way, I'm, I'm, dude, I don't want anyone thinking that I'm actually, I, I, like, I'm not saying I'm not rushing to Russia. I ain't mean, rushing to Russia. I, I do know that you don't want to criticize Putin within Russia. Uh, but whether or not Russia is the Hitlerian boogeyman that the West makes it out to be, I'm fairly certain that that's not the case either. And anyway, so that's it. So Jimmy Kimmel is a disgusting human being. Uh, John Stewart is just unfunny. And while everyone comes over to Rumble as we prepare to end on YouTube, link to Rumble, let me read a couple of super chats. A few Rumble rants. We got a super sticker from CR. I hope you didn't mean to put in a comment. Thank you very much for the support. And uh, that is say, I hope you didn't mean to put in a comment and accidentally hit the sticker and you had a message and now you have to do another. If you Okay, thank you for the support. We got Ginger Ninja is in the house. I'm going to the bottom. Ginger Ninja says, I listen to you at 1.5 speed all the time to catch up. I also have seizures. Coincidence? I think not. Th now I'm going to wake up with the liability lawsuit. Why shouldn't I call a treasonous hag a treasonous hag? I must always speak the truth. The only reason, Ginger Ninja, is because legally speaking, treason legal definition. The only reason is that treason is the only crime defined. It's an act of waging war against the United States or materially aiding its enemies. And so I think that the only reason, whether or not we're in a de facto culture war, ideological war, whatever, just as a matter of pure fact and law, we're not at war. So I don't think, unless we're, unless it's like aiding and abetting, I don't know, a country that we have a declaration of war against, but I don't think there's any of those that exist at this point in time. So with that said, actually, before, while this number trickles under 1,800 on YouTube, we've got two tips over on vivabarnslaw.locals.com. Spam Ranger sent a $5 tip, says, working on amicus brief to make Jack Smith more angry. How to serve it, pro se in Florida from California. Deadline is today. What is the wisdom of the audience? I give no legal advice, especially when I do not have any idea as to what the proper answer would be. And then we got Carol Meadows, $1 tip says, Japan has closed borders and doesn't allow immigration. No, it's, it's just, I mean, it's, they, they have their own issues. It's not like they don't have issues, but they have different issues. Okay. Why'd the number go up? We're at 1817. We should be at, uh, oh, 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 it's 1801. I like this. This is like, and then we're getting into the Jack Smith motion. I'll just give the spoiler alert. Jack Smith didn't really threaten anybody. It's, it's, it's a very weird thing. Like the left hates threats when they think they're coming from Trump, but then they love them when they, when they want to pretend that they're coming from their um, attack dogs, Jack Smith. So uh, it, it, it wasn't really a threat, but you know what? I'm not going to get that neurotic. We're ending on YouTube. Come on over to Rumble or come directly over to vivabarnslaw.locals.com. Yesterday, for those of you who don't know, or if you're not a member, I was in the car. We had a live stream from the car. Link to Locals. Boom. 1818. That's a, that's a lucky number. We're going to end it right there. Okay. Ending on Rumble, on YouTube. Going to Rumble and the link to vivabarnslaw.locals.com is there. Boom. Shake this out. Stretch it up. All right. Uh, so I'm not going to read through the filing. It's Jack Smith made a filing. There's a, there's a disagreement going on right now in the Florida. Uh, this is the uh, president. Well, it's the Presidential Records Act. It's the not. It's the classified documents case where Trump is alleged to have taken presidential records, classified information uh, to his home in violation of the Espionage Act. The reason why I say it's not a Presidential Records Act case is because Jack Smith and the prosecution don't want it to be because if the Presidential Records Act comes into play, then a very valid and a very um, jurisprudentially recognized defense comes into play that would basically undermine the prosecution, that being personal records of the president that he's within his rights to take under the Presidential Records Act. This is my understanding. If I get anything wrong, please correct me. I think I, I, think I finally you know, clicked those pieces of the puzzle together. The, the Presidential Records Act was what was at issue with the Clinton sock drawer uh, case, the one that Trump referenced, the one that Barnes has been talking about forever, where uh, then-President Bill Clinton left office and took with him some recordings that he had recorded with a journalist who was writing a biography or something like that, memoirs. And um, I guess he wanted those recordings because they had some 
I don't know if it's compromising or embarrassing or whatever uh, information on them. So he took the recordings, hid them in his sock drawer. I don't want to know what else was going on with that sock drawer, but we all know the um, adolescent meme. And we also probably now know why when they were raiding Trump's place, they went into Barron's underwear drawer or Melania's underwear drawer. I forget which. I thought it was a joke at the time, but now I understand the reason for why, for which they did it. So if, and in the Bill Clinton case, um, I'm going to forget the name of the judge. It has a B in it. And Amy Berman, Judge Amy Berman came to the conclusion that these are the president's documents. He can choose to take them at his sole discretion with no further formalities, willy-nilly. If you don't like it, stuff it. You don't have that presidential executive power. Boom, bada, bing, that's it. Under the Presidential Records Act. That is presumably one of the defenses that Trump is going to raise here. And the issue right now is that as they're, as they're drafting or preparing the jury instruction forms, uh, Eileen Cannon is proposing adding language that would mention the Presidential Records Act and add that as a question of law to be adjudicated by the jury as relates to the prosecution of this case. And it would be obviously very... Um, what did Jim Carrey say in Liar, Liar? It would be very devastating to the prosecution if that verbiage were to be allowed because that's basically Trump's out. You can't indict me for this. There's no Espionage Act violation because these were my documents. I'm allowed to keep them. And if you don't like it, Jack Smith, sit and spin. And so he made a filing and in the filing, it threatens Judge Eileen Cannon. What's the threat? To take her up to the freaking Court of Appeal. Big, big freaking deal. Uh... Do I go with the, let's go with, let's go. With, this is not the real Jack Smith, by the way. So don't anyone be fooled by it. It's funny. And I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's parody. I know it says parody, but I don't know if it's supposed to be making Jack Smith look good or Jack Smith look like uh, the Mr. Smith out of the matrix. And you know what? Now I realize this is supposed to be critical of Jack Smith, not flattering summary guy who has been issued gag orders in all his trials for attacking judges, prosecutors, court staff, family members, witnesses, is now upset his pet judge is being put on notice. I, this is not parody. This is intended to make Trump look bad and Jack Smith look good. Dude, I don't understand it anymore. It's like, it's like that episode of The Simpsons where like, are you being sarcastic? I don't even know anymore. This was Donald Trump's truth social post. <laughs> I love deranged special counsel. Oh, Jack Smith is special, all right. Like, Little, what was his name? Little Jack from, uh, oh, hold on. Chat, get it before I have to look at it. What was the name of, uh, of the, the Ben Stiller's character in Tropic Thunder? It was Little Jack, right? <laughs> what was the name of the character? Little Jack? Out of uh, Tropic Thunder, Ben Stiller's character, Happy Jack. It was Happy Jack? Now we're, we're going to call it, we're going to call simple Jack. It was simple Jack, not happy Jack. Uh, we're going to call <laughs> Jack Smith, simple Jack. All right. Sorry. I got distracted. Why do I always get distracted? Deranged, simple counsel, special Jack Smith, who has a long record of a failure as a prosecutor, including a unanimous decision against him in the Supreme U S court, U S Supreme court should be sanctioned or censured for the way he's attacking a highly respected judge, Eileen Cannon, who is presiding over his fake documents, hoax case in Florida. He is a low life who is a nasty, rude and condescending. And <laughs> I love these because it does. It, it's they're So they're so wildly like you could, I, I could see him dictating it. I do this all the time. He is a lowlife scoundrel. Oh, I love it. He is a lowlife who is nasty, rude, and condescending, and obviously trying to, quote, play the ref, end quote. He shouldn't even be allowed to participate in this sham case where I, unlike crooked Joe Biden, Hillary Clinton, and all the rest, come under the Presidential Records Act. I did nothing wrong, but Biden did because he was VP and senator, not president. And Hillary did because she was secretary of state, not president. They didn't have the privileges afforded to them under the Presidential Records Act. And it makes sense as to why. And they let him off scot-free. Hmm. How'd that happen, Jack? A two-tiered system of justice, election interference. Chat, is, um, is Jack Smith, this account, is it posting this to make Trump look bad or to make the system look bad? One is to make Trump look bad. Two is to make the system look bad. I'm, I'm genuinely confused, but I, I have sometimes trouble reading sarcasm on Twitter. One, it's trying to make Trump look bad. Two, it's trying to make Jack Smith and the system look bad. Let me see what the chat has to say. OK, 
Okay, let's see this here. Let's see this here. Uh, gotta, gotta get to it. Gotta get to it. Come on. One, critical of Trump. Two, no, three is not an option. Delays the obvious. Two, make the system look bad. Okay. Two, good. So yeah, two, three. Okay. No mods, Wild West. <laughs> two. All right. And we got Hoppity Hooper, who I know and respect. He says, one, if there, uh, the chat could be as crazy as it wants, but if there are spammers, let me know and I will spam, I will block the spammers. That's it. Anybody continually tweets. Hey, Viva, how's your blood pressure today? Says Cecilia 14. I feel good. I didn't have an energy drink before we got started today because I didn't want the heart rate going too much. Bubs and Vigian. Okay, so that's um, that just reading a comment from Salty Army is Legion. So that's the response. Now, I'm not, we're not going through the full motion, but the full motion says, Eileen Cannon, you're an idiot and you don't understand the law. Very polite judicially. It says, the Presidential Records Act has nothing to do with this case. If you put it in the jury instruction form, uh, we're going to appeal you right away. People are framing it as a threat. I think Trump is sort of being facetious or glib. Um, but I like it. It's a threat. You're right. But Judge Jack Smith is threatening Judge Eileen Cannon. Where the heck is the article? That's not it. That's not it. Trudeau, fact check. Things just got, oh, here we go. Things just got, I pull up the most unhinged, unfringed uh, lefty ruling, uh, lefty articles to read this crap because I love it. The, 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 the filing from Jack Smith effectively says you have an erroneous understanding of the law. Presidential Records Act has nothing to do with this case. If you insist on putting it in the jury form, it's going to taint the file and not in the Fannie Willis taint way. It's going to taint the file, cause irreparable harm. I'm going to appeal you right now. Jack Smith, go ahead and effing do it. You know what the beautiful thing is? When Jack Smith threatens an appeal, it's Trump's fault. When Trump appeals, it's Trump's fault. All, road le all roads lead to Trump's fault. Things just got very real. Legal experts say Jack Smith appeal threat puts Cannon on notice. Dude, you always have the right to appeal. Shut the hell up. Nobody's scared of you. You look like you smell bad. And you. if I had to bet that he has dirty stuff on his computer, this is this is what the man with dirty stuff on his computer looks like. Hey, he looks like he smells bad. Okay, sorry, that's not nice. Special counsel Jack Smith's team on Tuesday pushed back against an order. The judge overseeing program trust classified documents. Okay. Smith and Trump's lawyers submitted a proposed jury instructions in response to an unusual order from U.S. District Eileen Cannon based on competing interpretations of the Presidential Records Act. The PRA requires a president to turn over his documents to the National Archives upon leaving office, but Trump has claimed it gives him the right to deem government records as personal property. Trump didn't give, give that interpretation. Amy Berman did, a judge who set the precedent in the Clinton sock drawer case. Smith's legal team said the jury instructions were based on a fundamentally flawed legally premise, yada, yada, yada. Okay, fine. Um, and if the court rules against him because any jury instructions that include the PRA would distort the trial, PRA's distinction between personal and presidential records has no bearings on whether a former president's possession of documents containing national defense information is authorized under the Espionage Act and the PRA should play no role in the jury instructions. Well, thanks for making an argument that you'll make to the jury as to whether or not the PRA is applicable but you're sure as hell not going to tell the judge that uh, that interpretation of the law is not part of the case. I mean, it's an amazing thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. The PRA makes provisions for personal records for the president, or at least it contains exceptions for personal records, but I get to decide what's a personal record. I Jack Smith, special Jack. Of course he wants that power. If, if Jack Smith unhinged, special, simple prosecutor, Jack gets to decide what's private records and what's what did he say what falls under the ambit of the um espionage act well guess what the president no longer has that power does he jack smith has that power and anyway, you got kyle cheney okay there you go prosecutors are emphatic trump's treatment of presidential records is both a fiction he invented belatedly at the urging of tom fitton tom fiction tom fitton is from judicial watch He's the one that I believe filed the original lawsuit in the Clinton sock case, if I'm not mistaken. It's not a fiction, you morons. It's precedent. I know that the two are very difficult to understand when you suffer from terminal TDS. It's like a parasite that actually goes up through your nose. It's called air and knowledge, and it eats the front part of your brain. Things just got very real. Which is the, which is the lawyer who said this? Ryan Goodman? Let's see where Ryan Goodman teaches. Department of Defense. Oh, he works at the Department of Defense, and he looks to be co-director at RCLS underscore NYU. 
Ryan Goodman says things just got very real. Department of Justice calls out judges can as outlandish jury instructions. As first, of all, I don't know that anybody's actually seen the jury instructions. I think it's a theory that they're floating, but I love it. When Jack Smith goes after a judge, stick it to her. When when Trump goes after a judge, that's it. Ah, it's intimidation. Oh, there are a bunch of hypocrites. Smith just threw down the gauntlet by threatening to immediately appeal. If go ahead and appeal, you jackass. Oh, that's what we're going to call him, jackass. To avoid a miscarriage of justice. To make this crystal clear, if judge, if trial begins and Judge Cannon makes a ruling that is legally erroneous, in the middle of the trial, resulting in a not guilty verdict, prosecutors cannot appeal the verdict, he explained. That's why Jack Smith wants a ruling before the trial so he can appeal. Okay, good for him. Uh, do they even mention Clinton in here? And of course, why would they why would why would Salon mention the actual judicial precedent to the readers that they're actively misleading? By the way, go back to the Time magazine article. Changing the laws, using censors to control the flow of information and perceptions. If nobody knows that there's actual legal precedent for the personal records being kept in a sock drawer because Clinton wanted to put it there, and that it's a, a fiction made up by Tom Fitton, well, my goodness, you're going to have a lot of stupid readers of Salon. Although I dare say anybody other than me and my ilk who read Salon for actual information are probably stupid morons to begin with. And they're certainly not ever going to crawl out of that stupid, moronic um, trench by continuing to read Salon. So that's that. Uh, what's going to happen? Jack Smith is going to appeal. Judge Eileen Cannon, appeal Jack Smith. And then, and then see where this trial goes. I'm still sticking with my prediction that the Alvin Bragg hush money payment is not going to trial by April 15th. So stick, stay to that. I was right with... Uh, Scott McAfee on the First Amendment claim dismissal of the thing. I will see if I was right ultimately on this on the uh, disqualification of the Fanny. But um, Eileen Cannon is going to say, "Piss off, uh, Jack Smith. You make arguments. I'm the judge. I believe that the Presidential Records Act is a core component to this lawsuit. And if you disagree, appeal me right now and have fun. I'm sure the Court of Appeals will disagree with the prior precedent that was set in a very similar." factual pattern situation of Bill Clinton and his dirty sock drawer. So that's Jack Smith. Now, I wanted to bring this up because uh, we got a new member, people. Canadian Patriot for Truth is now a monthly supporter. So someone has actually gone. If you look down here, uh, can I do this? Wait, get rid of the rants. Oh, it won't let me do that. If you go down here, how do I get, I can't, I can't see it. Hold on. Welcome to the channel. But you'll notice if you go to the the page they make it very easy if you want to join i have not joined my own channel so ooh, 411 thousand followers on rumble booyah oh what are we up to in terms of thumbs up ah we can get to a thousand right there's six thousand people watching um you can join straight from the page if you so choose uh to support it otherwise just share share and share again all right i think that's it for jack smith uh, let me make sure that's it for Jack Smith. I don't think I have anything more to add to that. So we'll see what the timeline is for that. I, ju I just love the way all of a sudden now, um, all of a sudden the media loves prosecutors threatening judges. What they what they perceive to be a threat. I, I don't think it qualifies as a threat, period. Um, and that's it. You know, it's sort of, sort of on point while we're on the subject here. Just by, Joe Biden posted this. We're at a real inflection point. People, we're at a real, let me be clear. We're at a real inflection point in history. I'm sure Karine Jean-Pierre, c'était elle qui a écrit ce tweet. Uh, I'm sure Karine Jean-Pierre wrote this tweet. If we win this election, we'll be in a position to set the course for decades to come in a way that makes America better. Yeah, because things are going real, real fucking well now, Joe. It, it's a future we can build together. And I just said, look, look at, look at this. These are three of the dirtiest, most awful people on earth. Like, gen genuinely, first of all, you got Bill Clinton over here. Looks like if uh, that, oh God, if that's, uh, I mean, he looks like a, a caricature of what he used to look like, but you know, anyways, at least he's, he's alive and he's reasonably fit. Uh, I said, these are three of the worst people on earth right here. Just for anybody who has forgotten. Obama, Fast and the Furious, gun running to cartels in Mexico leads to the murder of a Border Patrol agent. His, uh, Eric Holder, oh, I forget what his position was. Uh, Cripe, I forget it, doesn't it? Contempt of Congress. They, 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 they commit crimes, lie about it, conceal it, 
defy all congressional orders to uh, talk about it. He weaponized the IRS to go after the Tea Party. He weaponized the IRS to go after his political rivals. He drone executed an American citizen and his 16-year-old son overseas, no, ju no due process, no nothing. That, that's your man right here. By the way, he won, a, he won a Peace Prize, a Nobel Peace Prize for having done nothing. Although, in fairness to him, him having done nothing was more amenable to global peace than him having been president. We'll skip right over to Bill Clinton. Got a BJ in the White House. Sexually abused, and I do say sexually abused or exploited, an intern. Because Monica Lewinsky is an intern to the president. There's a bit of a position of power there that makes it an exploitive relationship. And she came out as and said as much later on in life. Sexually exploited an intern in the Oval Office while a married man. He bombed an aspirin factory. There's a I, I have to make sure I understand my facts on that before holding that against him. But I'm pretty sure he's to be blamed for that. He uh, got disbarred. That's right. He got disbarred for uh, improper sexual misconduct. Was ordered to pay like $800,000 uh, damages. Um, Linda Tritt. Was it Linda Tritt? I think it was her. No, who was one that he... Um... Oh, geez, Louise. Uh, Broderick. Juanita Broderick. Yeah. Sexual deviant. That's fine. Oh, yeah, that's right. He also flew to Epstein's Island more time than he can count. And apparently allegedly, in the absence of Secret Service. Why anyone would do that, I have, I have no idea. And here you got Joe Biden, who found ways to siphon money to his crackhead son so that he could take his 10%, allegedly took a shower with his daughter at inappropriate ages by his own daughter's admission, uh, corruptly, corruptly withheld funds to pressure foreign entities not to investigate a company that his son was getting paid 50,000 bucks a month for, covered up his son's drug uh, abuse, felonious acquisition of firearms. The son did. Uh, I th Joe Biden actually accidentally once paid one of Hunter Biden's hookers $10,000. The payment came through uh, Joe Biden bank account from the lawyers. Ask Marco Polo. These are three of the worst people on earth. Hands down. So yeah, but, but they, but in their own minds, in their own minds, they're, they're gods. We are at a real inflection point. This election will set the course for decades where we agree on that. Sleepy Joe. All kid diddling scum says co-op 115. Allegedly. Okay. Anyhow, so that's it. So I think that was all we had on um, Jack Smith. Eh, okay. Let me, let me clean up a little bit in the backdrop here. Biden's wins. Ah, okay. Here's, here's a fun one. Here's another one. Because Biden's wins Twitter account. This is a Twitter account that's not, I don't think it's official. Keeping score of Biden's wins, the largest online community of President Biden supporters. Oh, my goodness. And all they have is 345,000. <laughs> nice. Uh, all right. This, this is what they said, by the way, because the, the Biden's wins is as demented and senile as, as Sleepy Joe. They, they don't know what the hell they're talking about. Even Fox News hosts, hosts, plural, that's a lie, but we'll get there, are blaming Donald Trump for inaction on border security. Retweet this so all Americans know. Trump is responsible for any border-related incidents. Sounds like they're telegraphing their next move. Like th this is this is the David Mamet fear hides a wish. This is the um, deep state telegraphing their next move. There will be an incident. So when it happens, you useless sheep, blame it on Trump. Getting ahead of ourselves here. Let's see what just... but, you know. The, the bigger point here is we are discussing immigration, which is a hot political issue according to the polls. It was a racist issue in 2016. Forget that. Is that if you know former President Trump really cared about this issue, why did he block legislation that would have provided more border agents, more asylum judges, allowed the president the power to shut down the border when there was chaos or a surge? That's what. You know, was right, there on a bipartisan one, basis so, so and here's, was stopped. Let me ask you a question. But you know, does everybody know who that man is? Everybody knows who Juan Williams is, right? Juan Williams is probably more of an unhinged Democrat than Joe Biden himself. The the Fox News has their resident Democrat. Juan Williams is one of them, and uh, Geraldo Rivera, I think, is the other. Everything that that man just said is a lie, as you would imagine, because now that you know that he's an unhinged lefty, you know, token lefty. For, uh, for Fox News. Everything he said is a lie. Let's just go through it. He cared about this issue. Why did he block legislation that would have provided more border agents, more asylum judges, allowed the president the power to shut down the border? The president has that power now. 
And Trump tried to exercise that by executive order and he was sued. The president has all that power now. What that border bill did give by way of powers that the president didn't already have, exclusive jurisdiction to the D.C. courts. What that border bill did do is guarantee 5,000 minus one illegal immigrants crossing daily, but not contiguous, uh, but only contiguous to uh, America. So only Mexican and Canadian. No Chinese, Russian, uh, Uzbekistani, Middle Eastern, none, none of them. Everything that this man just said is a lie. Why? Because it seems that that's all unhinged lefties can do. Was chaos or a surge. That's what, you know, was right, there on a bipartisan one. basis. By, the fact that there was bipartisan elements to that only proves that there is, in fact, a lot of deep state rhinos in there who war whores like Dan Crenshaw. That border bill, which contains $60 billion in aid to Ukraine, of course, war whore Dan Crenshaw is going to love. A lot of rhinos, a lot of war whores, a lot of deep state actors. Of course, they're going to love it. Oh, shudder. All right. Well, speaking of war whores, this is, this is also just breaking news. Listen to this. War whore Anthony Blinken. What, what's that incident going to be? Maybe there's going to be the, the, the black swan event that's going to alter the way 2024 election is conducted. Maybe this is how it's going to be. Ukraine, the determination of every country represented here uh, at NATO uh, remains rock solid. Uh, we uh, will do everything that we can. Allies will do everything that they can to ensure that Ukraine has what it needs to continue to deal with Russia's ongoing aggression against Ukraine, an aggression that gets worse uh, with every passing uh, uh, day. Ukraine will become a member uh, of NATO. Uh, Look at this man's face. Our purpose at the summit is to help build a bridge to that membership uh, and uh, to create a clear pathway for... Uh, Does it look like he's being held hostage? Like back in the day, it looked like he was the one holding Joe Biden hostage when Joe Biden referred to, who was it, China as a uh, corrupt dictatorship? This guy looks, I mean, this is what it looks like when your soul has been sucked out of your body, when you have no, no spirit left. This guy. This is, this is V for Vendetta level of villainy right here. Uh, for Ukraine, uh, moving forward. Uh, so of course, we believe that Ukraine deserves to be a member of nato and that this should happen sooner rather sooner sooner rather than later and what, what happens then do, do they automatically is it like an automatic triggering of of uh, article 5 of the of the un i forget what it's called now is it automatically automatic automatic triggering of that is it automatic guaranteed world war three nuclear war if ukraine becomes a member of nato i don't know i'd have to look into that question and by look into it i mean i'm going to ask barnes on sunday night but a bing but a boom Oh, okay. Well, we're going to end with some fun stuff here. Hold on a second. <laughs> let's, let's just, let's, you know, speaking of borders, let's pull this, um, to the North of the border. Remember the, I, I've, I've been, I've been bringing it to your attention for a little while now. Plans to double Canada's population by the year 2100 from 38 million to a hundred million. Um, I've been bringing this to your attention for a little while now also. Canada's growth is 97.5% fueled by immigration. What could possibly go wrong? Protests in the streets, massive uh, social discord, clashing entities of citizens and non-citizens. What, what could possibly go wrong? This is out of Fox News, so we're going to take it with a grain of salt. But amid, a gra amid migrant surge, Canada's Trudeau says immigration, says immigration there needs to be brought under control. He's been a staunch immigrant supporter. I guess has he gotten enough of the um, has he gotten enough of the damage from his unmitigated border policy uh, that he can now tamp down? I guess he's gotten enough of the chaos and he's gotten enough of I don't know the, the future votes. He recently warned that the stream of temporary immigrants entering the country must be brought under control. Didn't he just guarantee to take uh, however many from from Gaza and the Middle East? I think he did. He's been a staunch immigration supporter, said the rate of temporary immigration crossing their border has come at a pace much faster than it can handle. Oh, what's that? You, you didn't already have an existing housing crisis for your existing citizens that you were elected to represent you. Scum of the earth. Whether it's temporary foreign workers or international students in particular, they have grown at a rate far beyond what Canada has been able to absorb. Hey, dude, uh, didn't you get the WEF memo? Double the population and you've only got ooh, 75 years to do it.
Trudeau said temporary immigrants now make up seven and a half percent of the population, up from two percent in 27. This is under his regime. When they say one man can't destroy a country, Trudeau said temporary immigrants now make up seven and a half percent of the population, up from two percent in 2017, adding that they need to get the numbers back under control. But you've announced an open border. Didn't you promise that when Trump came into office? We want to get those numbers down. It's a responsible approach to immigration, yada, yada, yada. Now he's anti-immigration. Trudeau's shift in tone comes after he's relied on immigrants to push economic growth and shorten labor gaps. The influx of immigrants into Canada since the COVID-19 pandemic has caused a dire crunch in several areas. Healthcare? They're killing people left, right, and center, making room for the illegals or legals. I don't know, know how they're, what, what the status is. Home, home issues? Uh, re, re, home ownership? Property crisis. One of the reasons we got here in the first place is that the federal and provincial governments just didn't were out of, didn't want to touch this issue for fear of looking xenophobic. Okay. Reality hits you hard, bro. Reality hits you hard. The public, if anyone doesn't know that, that's um, it's a it's a Shmoyoho song. Reality hits you hard, bro. Watch it; it's fantastic. Trudeau's shift toward current public opinion on immigration also comes after his challenger, Conservative Party Leah Poiliev, has taken a big lead in many opinion polls in the country. I don't trust Pierre Poliev, but I know that I don't trust Justin Trudeau. That that he's a he's a uh, fair weather politician, following whatever the trend is, and now he realizes that Canadians are thoroughly fed up uh, with immigration, with doubling the population, with the problems that that brings when they have themselves a healthcare system crisis, a housing crisis, and you got these jackass politicians telling you to pay more at the pump carbon tax, um, shut down, you know, cripple national energy production, be reliant on China, India, go begging to foreign countries, terrible regimes to meet your, 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 your necessities. Yeah. It's cool. It's cool with Trudeau. So long as he benefits politically from it, but now he sees that he's no longer benefiting politically from all of that. So better change tune. I was never, I never supported the illegal immigration. Ginger Ninja, just like the judge E. Jean Carroll's case, intentionally committing traitorous acts against the liberties of the populace of these United States could be seen as treason by your average citizen. If the judge can say <clears throat> sexual assault equals rape, then cons concerted election interference equals treason. Sorry, not sorry. And if anybody doesn't know what Ginger Ninja's talking about, he's talking about Judge Kaplan in the E. Jean Carroll case who basically said, yeah, sure, the jury found Trump liable for sexual abuse. But that's basically rape. So he, we can say that he raped her. Now the media gets to run with the headlines and assholes like George Stephanopoulos get to say Trump raped her. Trump was found guilty of rape. Oh. One kid might be coming into the office here. All right. And then we got a couple of fun stuff here. So I'm going to give everybody the link. We're not done yet. I'm just going to give everybody the link one more time to, oh my goodness, hold on. I'm going to share this with everybody. There's a meme in our in our locals community here. Locals, come one, come all. And if you are so inclined and want to support the work that we do, support there. But hold on. This is Jack Smith. Oh, my goodness. Finboy, I'm stealing this. Save image as Jack. Okay, that's in my downloads. This is one of our most talented AI image generators over at vivabarneslaw.locals.com. And that is Simple Jack, the prosecutor. It's pretty good. All right. Now, what was I doing here? I was going to, oh, I, was, I went there specifically to read the uh, other tipped questions that have come in. So we got Pasha Moyer. Here he is. Oh, Simple, that came from Pasha Moyer? Well, Pasha Moyer, nice. Here he is, Simple Jack Smith. Carol Meadows says Japan has closed borders and doesn't allow immigration. And I think that's the old one there. Yeah. Okay, good. We got them all. All right. Just a couple of fun stuff to end the day. Uh, we're we're, we're going to be in Canada. I, I, uh, I've read this article multiple times and I still don't understand what's going on. And I, this is not a shot at rebel news journalism. This is a shot at what the hell is going on in Canada. Trudeau government to lead a delegation of 2S LGBTQI plus veterans to commemorate the first war, world war in Europe. This is divide and conquer. I, I guarantee you, most, if not all, of any of the 2S LGBTQI plus veterans or service men or women 
do not want to be so segregated and highlighted and pointed out and used as props in, in a political war. I, I guarantee you, just maybe I'm thinking too rationally, but that's my prediction. That's my, that, that is what I would, be, my assessment would be as to whether or not it's good for military cohesion. Why not have, um, why not have the, a black, uh, a black veterans delegate and have the Jewish uh, veterans delegate, have, just have them go like, like color war. To to commemorate World War One, here you got your 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 Jewish military veterans or or service people. Uh, here you got your black ones. Here you got your Muslim ones. And then and see how many like are there going to be fewer Jews than than blacks? Are there going to be like more two S L G B T S? Are there, what do you have to break it down? Like do you have your gay military service people, and then you have your bi? This is uh, conduct that by design is intended to exacerbate problems. It marks the 107th anniversary of Vimy Ridge, during which 3,598 Canadians were killed, another 7,000 wounded. April 9, 1917, is regarded as the bloodiest day in Canadian military history. It's, it's ups it, This is what humanity is capable of. According to Wednesday uh, afternoon press release from Veterans Affairs Canada, a delegation will follow in the footsteps of Frederick Hardy, who was sentenced to hard labor in 1916 for charges relating to his sexuality. Maybe hard labor is not the terminology you want to use. Frederick was tried by a court-martial for an act of gross indecency with another male person. This year marks the 107th anniversary. Vimy Ridge, well, Hardy was released from his prison sentence after eight months. Yada, yada, yada. Let's see what's going on here. Oh yeah, this is um, veterans seeking help from uh, veterans uh, affairs uh, offered a death because you know too many immigrants in the country now. Healthcare systems overloaded. The people who fought for our freedoms uh, should now. It's cheaper for the country to put them to death than to treat them with dignity and give them the treatment they need for the service and the sacrifice that they've made. The delegation will visit the seventy. Well, th that's the story, and I don't understand how this is supposed to um, be carried out in reality. The the LGBTQAI plus mission will be comprised of Rainbow Veterans of Canada and the LGBT Purge and will be joined by Jeanette Petitpa, <clears throat> which actually means small step, petit small pa means step, Taylor, Minister of Veterans Affairs. Who is this person? Jeanette Petitpa, Minister of Veterans Affairs and Associate Minister of National Defense, once in Belgium. And then we got some spam. So that's what's happening in Canada. More divide and conquer, more make political litmus tests out of something that was never an issue before and, um, you know, bring to the fore and, and make a problem where there was never a problem before. Similarly so related to that story, and I'm telling you, I'm done playing the, um, it's not mental gymnastics, it's psychological fiction. I'm done playing the game. Listen, listen to this headline from the Daily Mail. Daily Mail does good work. How they then uh, demean themselves degrade themselves, humiliate themselves to write this headline. I thought it was a joke. Transgender Utah prisoner castrates herself in protest after being denied hormone treatment for two years as Department of Justice sues the state for discrimination. This is, this is, what, um, this is what the DOJ is doing. And you and, and Jenna Griswold is going to tell me that if there was a grounds to go after any of those people for bona fide death threats, the DOJ wouldn't find a way to do it. But the transgender Utah prisoner castrates herself. Some of us might, maybe I have a castrate definition. Like maybe, maybe there is a way to castrate a female dog. I don't know. Listen to the pronunciation. Castration. Removal or destruction of the testicles or ovaries using radiation surgery using radiation surgery or drugs so hold on maybe maybe i was wrong this entire time maybe that transgender destroyed her ovaries and i should be saying castrates herself hold on maybe i'm wrong I'll, I'm, I'm not above admitting that i'm wrong I'm just gonna have to go after being refused access to hormone an american prisoner who wanted gender affirming career castrated herself in a utah jail the unidentified prisoner who was diagnosed with gender dysphoria contacted her and requested hormones, female housing, women's underwear, and makeup. Okay, so it's a man. I was not wrong. Although I did not know that castration is, includes the ovaries. That's, that's, that's good to know. The inmate's mental health started to decline after she, 
was denied accommodations, castrated herself during a, st a state of deep mental anguish. I, the, uh, in, uh, uh, I'm sorry. A press release from the DOJ reads, 22 months after entering custody, she performed dangerous self-surgery and removed her own testicles. People, uh, there, there are times when I want off this rock. That, that's what the Department of Justice wrote, that she removed her testicles. Uh, <laughs> I mean, what, what, so like, are we, are, we're not at idiocracy anymore. This is no longer President Camacho. At least in, at least in idiocracy, they were giving plants fluid, even if it was Brandon or Br Brando. It's literal insanity, Jules Verne. It's, it's literal insanity, but the insanity is institutionalized. She removed her own testicles. I mean, I'm, I, I am. I don't often get speechless, but I'm, I'm officially speechless. And, and you're a bigot. If you're a bigot, if you do not say she removed her testicles. Oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. All right. Well, that's it. I think that's one way to end the show here. We're gonna we're gonna end on another delusional Democrat uh, as we as we make our way over to vivabarneslaw.locals.com. I might try to go fishing this afternoon. I might try to. Go see some alligators this afternoon. I've exercised for the day. I've got a caffeinated beverage that I'm going to go get when we sub over to vivabarneslaw.locals.com. But people, if you do not say that she castrated herself by removing her testicles and penis, you're a bigot. You are a very bad person. And you are the one who's not living in reality. Forward slash backslash sarcasm removed her testicles come on over to locals locals here tomorrow tommy not tommy john tommy robinson at noon or noon 30 eastern five o'clock um uk time let me make sure i didn't miss any rumble rants rumble rants smash that like harder bigots says jacob castro oh we got justin's brother in the house but a bing but a boom <clears throat> it's unbelievable okay um and that's it smash the well, how many how many we're up to 500 no 600 640 like that's not bad it doesn't matter share uh viva barnes law dot locals dot com if you want to get some merch you can go to viva fry get the bestest merch on earth uh what do we got oh we got yeah we got these stickers too i love these these i put everywhere um in a way that's not vandalism you can get shirts uh okay no actually before we leave people rumble and viva barnes law i promised lectern guy that I would auction one of these off. And I want to do it in a way that is feasible. Not that I'm going to like sue the person if they don't buy it um, afterwards or auction off. We're going to give the proceeds to a charity, a good charity, one that I have no direct or indirect interest in. Um, but I don't know the best platform or if there's an app that would facilitate the auction. I don't want to use eBay. I know that's what uh, Lectern Guy was been, has been using. I don't want to use eBay. If anybody has any ideas as to what the best method is, other than like having someone keep track of bids during a Sunday night show, let me know. Otherwise, we might just do keeping track of bids during a Sunday night show and I'll reach out to the winner afterwards. Although I have to figure out how to exchange email addresses in a way that's private. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. But if anybody's got any good ideas, do let me know, please. Uh, and with that said, come on over to vivabarneslaw.locals.com. Locals, boom. There it is. And I'm going to play one video while we play us out. And as I go to the fridge to get a beverage. So here we go. Just um, more unhinged lefties. Doing what they do best. Being unhinged lefties. So with that said, by the way, this is not parody. This is not satire. And I double checked. Enjoy. And I'll be back in one and a half minutes for our locals after party. Thank you all for being here. Sincerely, tomorrow, see you tomorrow, Sunday night show, 6 o'clock, if you're not going to meet us over on Locals, and I'll probably do a short vlog later this evening on McAfee's ruling. Enjoy, or don't. RFK Jr. was on CNN yesterday, and he said that Joe Biden is a bigger threat to democracy than Donald Trump. People talk about the threat to democracy that Trump poses. Do you really think that that is, is this an equal 
yeah, evil I mean, to I, Biden? I, I mean, listen, I can make the argument that President Biden is a much worse threat to democracy. And why does he think that? Because he says that Joe Biden has censored his opponents, taking him off social media. 37 hours after he took the oath of office, he was censoring me. No president in the country has ever done that. The greatest threat in democracy is not somebody who questions election returns, but a president of the United States who used the power of his office to force the social media companies, Facebook, oh, Instagram, good. Twitter, to censor his political critics. The Washington Post did a deep dive on this, and they found that to be not true. In fact, the one time that Kennedy points to him being censored is when the White House asked for a tweet to get removed, and then Twitter never did it. Instagram did remove him from oh, their platform. That's because he was spreading vaccine misinformation, and that's literally their prerogative. His candidacy is an embarrassment. This is a campaign about ego inflation based on a lie with a side benefit of helping elect Donald Trump. I just, I just want to just refresh your memory of what you just said here. Never did it. That to be not true. Go critics. The Washington Post did a deep dive on this, and they found that to be not true. Washington Post did a deep dive, and they found it to be not true. He wasn't censored. Oh, they did try it, and I think they did do it on Twitter. I have to double check that. Oh, yeah, and he was censored on Instagram, but that's because he... Oh, so it's not true, but it's true, but it's justified. I mean, it's literally the moving goalposts of disingenuous discourse. In fact, the one time that Kennedy points to him being censored is when the White House asked for a tweet to get removed, and then Twitter never, never did, did it. it. Instagram did remove him from their platform. He was ne he was never censored. They, the DOJ, the, the government never interfered with social media to censor him. It's false. I mean, they did do it with Twitter once, but they say they didn't do anything, and they did you know, kick him off of Instagram, but that's because he deserved it. Un unironic stupidity, morons, morons, to quote Judge Judy. And one last crumble rant, Raluca W, let's make Hunger Games fiction again. I watched Hunger Games. I didn't, I wasn't, I wasn't um, wildly impressed. All right, people, it ends abruptly on Rumble, but um, you might lose a little bit at the end, but all you're missing is me saying, come on over to vivabarneslaw.locals.com and I will see you tomorrow. Tommy Robinson in the house. And locals party. Here I comes, ending on Rumble and transmission. Have a great day. All right, dude. I I need to get in touch. I need to. I don't know if this company wants to have nothing to do with me. Get into all the chat here. I need to. I need to find this company. True North. It's nothing but carbonated water. It's got vitamin A, vitamin C, niacin, vitamin B, vitamin B twelve. Pantothenic acid, vitamin B5, zinc, no sugar, no sucralose, no stevia, no, no. Mm. Mm. And it's got 125 milligrams of caffeine, which is nice. Locals, how goes the battle? Uh, Viva Fry, Runkle of the Bailey has done several auctions. Check with him. Good call. Paracleric, merci beaucoup. I think I have his number still. Let me see here. Ian Corzine? Runkle? I, would, I think I got it. Um, yeah, Tom, so Joe Maskew. So Tommy Robinson, is, he's, he's, he's got a new book. And the new book is called, hold on. I'll give everybody the link here. I think they're taking pre-orders. Let me go into my DMs. Hold on. Messages. Tommy here. Urban Scoop. I'll give everybody the link to the book. And um, I need to... It would give me some good... I'm going to set up a link so we can get some good questions for Tommy. I mean, I, I know I'll probably end up covering everything invariably anyhow, but here's the link to his book. Link to book. Uh, I, I, how he... The subject matter that he broaches and how he was put in a, in a prison for an extended period of time with people who do not like him. It's like when, when Arthur Pavlovsky, when they put him in jail with a schizophrenic man who had sharp objects, pencils, and pens, they wanted something bad to happen to him. Undoubtedly, they want something bad to happen or wanted something bad to happen to Tommy Robinson. But I think he got 13 months for the violation of the court gag order because of his suspended sentence. Um, what does everyone think of Tommy? Like, uh, and... Is there anything I should know that I might not know? Go down here. Viva Fry, True North Energy. You know, oh, oh yeah, I'll open that. 
Parag Parag. Hmm. But I, I've, I've emailed them. So I, I have a chip on my shoulder where I presume people want to have nothing to do with me professionally because I'm too controversial or edgy, or whatever. But I probably have to get over that. Victor Cardone says, with an ex-CIA officer as his campaign manager and an unhinged radical billionaire as his VP, I find it impossible to take RFK Jr. seriously. What do you say, says Victor Cardone? Look, I've, I've heard both sides of it now. And I am more inclined to agree with Barnes than the critics. Barnes says, you know, when it comes to the woman, I, I, find, I know she had something to do with Facebook, a next exec, that she's sacrificing her, her future and risking her clout, stature, finances to run with RFK Jr. So, I, you know, I don't think she, if she's doing that as like a Manchurian candidate or like a double fakey um, infiltration to take rfk down and then she leaves and she goes back and they're like oh good job well done you took him down fine but i I'm, I'm more inclined for the time being to agree with barnes that she's making a sacrifice that lends more credibility to her authentic belief in what she's doing than to a deep state operative um uh angle to it plus apparently her her kid has autism which might play into things as well uh the cia officer in his campaign again uh that's his daughter-in-law and she might know how things work. Like there's a lot of, you know, Jack Posobiec, I think has intelligence. I mean, I think he has intelligence connections. He's still a good, he's a good guy. So it's not, it's not a cut and dry rule. Um, so I, I, I think that she's sincere. And I believe that the fact that you have these lefty idiots, like that guy that we just watched freaking out about it is a good indication that they're pissed about it and not happy about it, which means that it looks even more sincerely, organically um, righteous and authentic than not. So that's my take. I've heard it. And I'm more inclined to agree with Barnes on his interpretation than anybody else. Uh, and, I, and that's over Grobert. I, I like Grobert. I respect Grobert, and, and I agree with him a lot also, but I think he's freaking out about it. But he might prove to be right. Like, maybe they're untrustworthy. Maybe it's... But I don't see how that works the way it's playing out right now. Tommy is from Luton. As a white person, you do not walk in Luton. It is fully Muslim. I remember his, his something traumatic happened to his sister. I have to refresh my memory on all of this. Does Trump have any good connections? Boopsie. I have no... Oh, I, well, I'm sure he's good. Isn't she a billionaire, says Roostang? Yes. And what that billionaire, that's we're talking about uh, his VP pick, uh, RFK. What, the, what we've learned now about billionaires is that there's no billionaire who has true FU money because the government can come in and take everything you own like they're trying to do with Trump. So um, that's, that's what... The, there's... Elon Musk has been made aware of the fact that he does not have fuck you money anymore. Government comes in and says, no, or a judicial activist judge. No, that 53 billion, it's not mine's, but it's not yours. So she's a billionaire and she's risking everything by doing this. Kaylee Rose says, I'm not edgy. You are a little, you are a little viva viva. I did like swear. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's an amazing thing. Saying I will not refer to it as her testicles makes me edgy lunatics Lun lunatics not the person the person's got a mental problem it needs to be treated not 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 uh enabled and spence says i have a favorable opinion of tommy in spite of the absolute smearing of his name and character by prostitutes don't always think he has made great choices but he's a bruv i i believe that i have a favorable impression of tommy as well and it started off the other way so that's how, like i learned i remember thinking he's an anti-muslim uh, I mean, he he definitely has his issues. He's picking a fight with, uh, what is it? The second one of the you know the biggest religion in the world. Um, but I, I I don't believe that he's got a bigoted perspective on anything. It, 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 the arguments everybody can steal man these arguments, and the irony is, the people who claim that Islam is is off limits for critique level the exact same critiques against Christianity and Judaism. Oh, doesn't your Bible also is violent? It says to stone your neighbors and the and and the and the the adulterers. Yeah, it does. So th that argument goes to all religions as to whether or not the religions and the elements within their scripture that is violent is intended to be taken literally or is in fact implemented in that way in real life. And then people say, well, look, you look at the way Christianity is practiced in certain African countries, they do these terrible things. You're right. It's not all religion that's practiced properly or in accordance with the tenets or is. So what Tommy Robinson did to John Sweeney on the BBC was priceless. Well, hold on, Steve Britton. What did he do? 
Am I gonna, we're going to watch this in real time. Uh, Tommy. Tommy. Oi, Tommy Robinson. Tommy Robinson. It's not his real name, everybody. Tommy Robinson. Sweeney. What did he do? Tommy Robinson on exposing BBC's John Sweeney on Ezra Levant. Okay, well, I'm going to keep that up. Oh, hold on. Maybe you can just help me. If all the people of the book... All he did was point that out. Maybe she can get a job removing Tesco. Jules Verne. Hold on. All Tommy would do in, in the beginning was walk down the streets in what was supposed to be his home, and because he was white, he was not welcome. No, they had a they had a massive. I mean, they they had a they had a and probably still have a massive child exploitation ring that was targeting uh, white girls. I mean, is that is that? Am I, are we not allowed observing facts anymore? So, yeah, let me see here. We got to, I can't listen to Biden. I have no problem with RFK Jr. He's so knowledgeable and classy. With RFK, it's the impediment he has that has to do that he has no control over. His voice. I, I was trying to think of, hold on. Who did I get into a fight with over criticizing um, uh, Rob, RFK's voice? I think, RFK tweet. I think it was Michael Tracy. Who was it? Does anybody remember? I was, I was, I picked a fight with someone on Twitter who said, "Listening to RFK Jr. is like nails on a chalkboard." And I said, "You, you imagine judging another any person's medical condition like that." Um, RFK nails chalkboard tweet. It, okay, here I found it. Well, that's not the one I was thinking of. Oh, it doesn't matter. Anyhow, I picked a fight with someone on Twitter. Douglas Murray is more to the point. There were rape gangs, for sure. Have you interviewed RFK Jr. yet? Did I miss it? Please do, Boopsie. I haven't um, been able to. We haven't gotten it. I mean, it was scheduled at once, and then it got postponed. And I'll try again. Now that you mention it, I don't want to embarrass anybody, but I was going to interview another presidential candidate. And um, I, I, think, and I think maybe they found out that I was... Um, too edgy. I'll, I'll, I'm going to leave that email open. Oh, okay. I, but I don't want to get into the religion. The, the thing is, I, I don't. I hate discussing religion. Period. I know we're going to have to broach it tomorrow, especially given the, the subject matter of um, Tommy John's Tommy, John, Tommy Robinson's new book. I, I hate discussing religion genuinely and seriously. Imagine a president with Viva's hair. Imagine a governor of Florida with my hair. Mm. Um, it's not kind to make fun of the handicapped. I recall about your noting this at the time, Viva. I can't remember who, Joe Maskew. Well, that's like, like, it's not even fun to make fun of. It's not even cool to make fun of like overweight people. There, there, could, there could be uh, legit medical reasons to make fun of overweight people. You have to make fun of it anyhow. When it's relevant, it can be observed. Like Lizzo firing fit, uh, Lizzo firing fat, members of her team because she can be the only fat one well there you can make some comments about physical appearance but rfk's voice it's 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 a non-issue and anybody to make it material i mean although i have i believe i've said that you know hillary clinton has a very shrill ear piercing voice but that's just because every oh yeah doesn't matter can't make fun of people for things that are beyond their control viva for mayor of ntc what's ntc People in America are compassionate. They'll love RFK Jr. Didn't Lizard, didn't Lizzo quit? Yeah, Lizzo says she quit. Nobody's, nobody. No, she, she, I, I, she said she quits. I don't know that she's ever capable of quitting. People, can you imagine someone who, who vies for the attention and vies for that uh, celebrity status quitting? You can't, what are they going to do? It's like a UFC fighter. When they retire, they go crazy. They got to keep fighting either in the rink or out of the rink. Oh, hyphen, you sent me a... Uh, yes, hyphen, I got the text. Hold on. I have to go to the post box, the post office to pick it up. Lizzo is a disgusting pig. Lizzo is a disgusting pig, not because she's overweight, but because she's a disgusting pig spiritually, psychologically, and morally, period. Plenty of, plenty of beautiful people of all shapes and sizes. 
Lizzo was embroiled in the banana insertion controversy. I mean, it's so disgusting what she was alleged to have, have coerced, egged on her employees to do. Oh, what was I just thinking about? Moral debauchery. Oh, no, it um, <laughs> doesn't matter. Gypsy Muse. Sorry you late to the game, Viva, but I heard about the personal castration in jail cell in great detail on Sean Atwood YouTube video five years ago. Every, hold on a second. Every gory detail. Surely you know about Atwood. I know about Atwood. I've been on Sean, but that story that we just pulled up is not the same one. That's a new one. That story wasn't five years old. But do, uh, do, I've, I've heard, I, I, people have done crazy things. I don't understand. I mean, I, my mother, who's a neurotic woman as well, I mean, she sends me all these articles. There was a guy who tied a garden hose around his wee wee and, and chopped it off. And that's I had this. It's not that people criticize her for her weight. It's that P, it's that she tries to normalize it. Says Jules Verne twenty three. That's the issue as well. That's one where Jordan Peterson is right to raise the issue. It's physically not healthy. There's just not. There's not a question about it. It's not healthy to be overweight. There is also debate as to whether or not it's even healthy to be like ultra muscular overweight. BMI is not just about fat. It's about body mass. And so, you, I, by the way, my BMI is. Um, I, it puts me on the high end because I'm 158 pounds, give or take, and five, five and a half, five, six. It's muscle, but that is, carrying around that weight is not any easier on the heart than if it's fat, but there's a lot of other issues that you don't have to worry about. Or that fat is worse for other reasons, but it's the BMI itself. But yeah, that's right. It tries to normalize it. It's beautiful. It's healthy. Beautiful eye of the beholder. People get off on overweight people, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, healthy, it is not, period. And the idea that you're trying to normalize that which is unhealthy, normalize that which is harmful, is the big issue. That is not beautiful hyphen. I mean, look, there's a samurai, not samurai, a sumo culture. There's, that was from, uh, there's something about Mary. You know, in some cultures, uh, that is uh, revered. 1984 has come true, says Victor Cardone. Uh, idiocracy has come true. I have leg dystonia, a different version of RFK's dystonia. It's incurable, says LMJ Peter. Uh, I have to look that up. Leg dystonia. Leg di dystonia. It's a neurological movement disorder characterized by continuous or intermittent muscle contractions which cause abnormal, often painful repetition with the leg, foot, or toes. Um, is there no way, I mean, I guess the, the obvious question is, is there no way to, to remedy that by severing the nerve? But I guess then you, you, you lose the movement. Like the only way to, the only way to prevent it or, or to remedy it is to basically paralyze it. Well, God's, I mean, I say, I don't know. It, it looks like it's permanent. I hope there's a way to treat it or minimize the discomfort. That's gotta be terrible. I mean, Kayla Pollock, uh, the, the woman who's rendered quadriplegic talking about how she gets cramps. She's got involuntary spasms, and it's like, you're short, Viva. That's disadvantage in terms of BMI. Yep, that's Steve Britton. I also don't I don't put much stock in that. I, I don't overexercise to the point of causing heart damage. I'm not overly muscular to that point, and I don't do steroids. And my, 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 I know my vices. Generalized anxiety, I'm sure, is one of them. Levels of cortisol in the blood, I'm sure, is one of them. Now they are normalizing Ozempic. And other diabetic meds to use the uh, to use them for obesity. Yeah, it's like, it's 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 a bit, who is like I was talking about it with Marion. Oh, she wanted to come on today. We'll have to do it tomorrow. I was talking about it with Marion, my wife, and she's like, yeah, they they just like bring the price of insulin down. How about you bring the frequency of diabetes down? Like find the, two separate issues, and you can tackle both. How about you reduce diabetes? I spent the last three years stay home, stay alone, and stay silent, and stay um, inactive. Who would, have, who would have ever thunk? Okay, resident Bedouin, this is going to be good. The people will not revolt. They will not look up from their screens long enough to notice what's happening. Oh, shut the front door. That's good. I'm going to stretch my legs out here. Oh! I Hold on. I gotta, I, I'm, I'm fact-checking you here. Uh, not that I... Uh, resident Bedouin. The people will not revolt. Hold on. Google. Google. Here we go. The people will not revolt George Orwell. The people will not revolt. They will not look up from their screens long enough to notice what is happening. Hold on, but that's in a meme. 1980 book quote is false. Ooh, Bedouin, 
look, we're going to do this in real time, and it's only going to be among communities, so there's no judgment. There's no judgment here. Okay, so the, the, the quote reads, okay, so the actual quote. Okay, the quote reads, the people will not revolt. They will not look up from their screens long enough to notice what is happening. The quote appears on an image with three women looking, blah, blah, blah. At the time of publication, the post has been shared more than 160 times. Okay. One Night Hawk states that it's committed to educating. The analysis. AAP fact check found that the revolt appeared six times in the novel 1984, and the quote in the Facebook post does not appear in this exact or similar form. The statement most similar to the quote in 1984 is the masses never revolt of their own accord, and they will not revolt merely because they are oppressed. Hey, we learned something new. So I could, I'll trust that because I, I think I would have noticed that. No. Oh, misattributed George Orwell quote stems from stage play. What does that mean? Not that I trust Reuters. Pieces of garbage. Get this crap out of here. The quote is often associated. Uh, the passage was written by them. Then, okay, stage. Uh, so stage adaptation. Okay, fine. Fair enough. And yeah, we get the point, but um, now we know. And I did not mean to put resident Bedouin on blast or accuse him of anything. Viva, can you look into this story about crypto account collecting millions of pounds for Julian Assange's legal defense? No promises. Anything crypto, I uh, immediately get um, uneasy. Uh, see there, I just I see the wallet address, and I've already I've already gotten anxious. So. Uh, I'll look into it, but no promises. And maybe I'll just, uh, you know, Barnes and I will talk about it Sunday. I, I, uh, okay, let me see now. We got that. Okay. I think it was a quote from the movie 1984. Eh, it seems to be from a stage play. That's cool enough. Book versus stage. Sorry, it took me a second to find Viva's pick. Joe Maskew. And uh, we got quotes. Diversity is not our strength. Our strength is what unites us across our diversity. Our strength. I like Vivek. And uh, that's it. Okay, good. People, I think we've done good. The movie. Is there much diabetes elsewhere? Asia, Europe? Um, oh, by the way, so the, the I was going to go after uh, David Hogg again today, but I figured I should leave him alone. Um, uh, it was antidepressants. Now he's, he's, he's making stupid comments about, I didn't know that antidepressants and video games were alone in America. Did you guys notice something absolutely amazing? And I, I wonder why this is. So... Uh, somebody puts, I, I don't know if it was Charlie Kirk, whatever. There's a talk about, you know, antidepressants. It was RFK. It was in response to RFK. Talk about blaming violence on antidepressants and games. Something along those lines doesn't really matter. David Hogg replies, oh, I didn't know that America was the only place where you had antidepressants and video games. And I was like, okay, well, you idiot. Did you also not know that, like, America is the most antidepressant medicated country on earth? I was going to do that. And then I was like, well, I, I better make sure because I'm not sure. Google. I'm using Google, but it doesn't really matter. Maybe maybe the search result would be different elsewhere. So I went to look, and what I found to be absolutely fascinating, look at this. Top 10 countries by antidepressants. And you know what's... We're not in the top 10 countries, but not... Stay signed up. We're not in the top 10 countries, but not because... We're not in this. So I, then I get shocked. Here, let's go. Talk, go down. Uh... Can you just show me the countries, please? The list. I noticed it said Slovakia. Slov. Okay, well, I'm not getting it here. I noticed. Oh, let's take another one here. Here, antidepressants. Because anyway, here, look at this. So this is from Statistica. Uh, only necessary. Iceland, number one, 157 per million or whatever it is, per thousand. Portugal, United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, Sweden, Spain, New Zealand, Chile. Then I was like, oh, I can't see America there. And it sure as hell is not because America's not on the list. For some reason, uh, America is not factored into this. Look at this. Here, they give you the they give you the country there. And for some reason, America, they don't have accurate stats on. In 2018, apparently, it was at 110 per thousand. So in 2018 or 2016, the last time it was measured in America, it would have already been, uh, it would have already been within the top. Stop it! It would have already been within the top five, I think. And it's a very interesting thing as to why that statistic would not be readily available, because I guarantee you, 
America is number one by a long shot. And if anybody has that stat, please share it with me. But it, 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 I found it shocking. We're not in any of the lists. I, the, the, but the population doesn't matter. J, JP Spooner says population is like 500,000 in Iceland. It doesn't matter. It's per capita. But that Iceland would be number one. I can understand because they don't have any freaking sunlight. It's all a bunch of seasonal affected depression. But I believe America's number one. But I was flabbergasted that there's no study. There's no stats that they haven't, they haven't definitively, that that's not readily available information. And the only reason can be it's, uh, I, I noticed how high Canada was roosting. Yeah, Canada's top five. And there's no question America is more antidepressantified than Canada. We're, yeah, we're, the, America's number one. But if that comes out, that would be bad for pharma. There's no question there is some sort of pharma connection corruption going on there that's preventing accurate assessment or even asking the question and doing the stats in America because it would make America look terrible. And it might prove exactly what a lot of people like Alex Jones have been suspecting for a long time. So that's it. Okay. Guys, I've had a I've had a fun time today. I could sit here and the problem is I think I could sit here and do this all day, but I know that I shouldn't. My dad has dystonia too. He was a Baptist pastor and had to leave the ministry way back in 1982. He's still going strong at 94, but his voice has never improved. By the way, he's my hero, says Pasha Moyer. Gypsy Muse, sorry you're late to the game. Okay, we got that one. SDV, we got um Stu P. Dassel says, I'm going to admit that I can't vote for a person that I can't. I'm going to admit that I can't vote for a person that I can't stand sitting and listening to speak. That this rules out Biden and RFK. Yeah, I think you'll, you'll, you'll get over that. If, if the options are theirs, we'll, we'll see. With an, with an ex-CIA officer, we got that one. Simple Jack, we got Spam Ranger. Working on an amicus brief. Japan has closed borders. Okay, so I think we've done everything. We've done good. I'm going to get up the link right now for the questions for Tommy Robinson. I think I'm going to go download his older book, uh, Silence. I'm going to start doing some homework so that I can make sure I know enough to have a wonderful, natural, organic conversation with Tommy. I'm super excited. I've been following him since easily 1918, 2018, when he when I couldn't believe what was happening to him because of that bull crap coming out of um, the UK courts. Thank you all for being here, locals. Sincerely, if I go to see some uh, alligators this afternoon, maybe I'll do a little live fishing and see what we can do. But I'm going to go get a kid now and uh, be a parent. So with that said, I haven't forgotten anything. See you soon. See you tomorrow at the very latest. Peace out, everybody. Enjoy the day.